Good afternoon, everybody. I hope you can hear me okay. Um, I am delighted to welcome you all to this, which is the first episode of a series of exciting webinars. Uh, we're really pleased to work uh, as the Fingal Local Enterprise Office with our partners, Google Digital Garage, on this new initiative. And the local enterprise offices have worked with Google previously over the years. Indeed, Google has been a key partner in one of our initiatives called the Ireland's Best Young Entrepreneur Competition. So this particular partnership between Leo Fingal and Google is all about helping SMEs to use digital technology to their benefit. And there are so many ways that small businesses can punch above their weight if you have the knowledge and the expertise in, in exploiting digital technology. But like many other aspects of running your own business, it's something that you need to be really up to speed with in terms of the technology and how it is evolving. Uh, local enterprise offices, we've been devoting a lot of resources to helping businesses to embrace technology. And this is one of our key objectives over the next six years. The trading online voucher scheme is something that some of you may have encountered previously or indeed you may have availed of. And that helps small businesses to develop the e-commerce platform. And that's an example of, of one of the initiatives that we've been running. Indeed, since the pandemic struck in March of last year, there has been an incredible 15,000 businesses throughout the country have participated and availed of the trading on a voucher scheme and have benefited from it. Of those 15,970, almost 1,000 are businesses based in Fingal. Uh, and the total funding that has been invested in these businesses has been is 36.5 million euros. So it's, it's very significant in terms of the resources that we are putting into helping businesses to develop their e-commerce uh, platforms and their digital technology competencies. So this series is a five-week series. It's running each Wednesday, starting now today. Uh, today's webinar is about digital marketing and developing your digital marketing strategy. Next week, the second one is making your website work. And then following that, the following week is learning how, to, how best to use Google Ads, uh, then search engine optimization. And lastly, uh, it, it concludes in four weeks' time with using analytics. I was I was delighted to see yesterday evening when I was looking at the bookings for this series, there's actually 990 bookings from businesses, most of whom are from Fingal, but also from all corners of Ireland, indeed, for the series. So that's I'm sure that's well over 1,000 now. So certainly there's a lot of interest in this area. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> Not sure what happened there. Hopefully you can all hear me okay. Um, so we just, just lost the end of Ashin's introduction there. But I'm going to go over a couple of things anyway um, that he will have been mentioning, I think, uh, just at the end there. So thanks, Ashim, for, for introducing today's session. Um, my name's Emma. I'm a trainer with Google Digital Garage. Uh, we're running these sessions uh, in collaboration and partnership with Elio Fingal. Um, and as Ashim mentioned, it's a, a series. So if you'd like to sign up for any of the others, please do check out the link that's in the description box. And I'm sure Zoe can pop that into the chat as well. So as I mentioned, I'm a trainer for Google's digital skills training program, Google Digital Garage. Uh, I'm also a digital marketer. And alongside me today, we have another digital marketer with lots of experience, Zoe. So she'll be here in the chat, well, she's already in the chat with you, uh, looking out for any of your questions and answering some of them. Also passing some questions over to me as well, uh, if there's anything that she thinks would be useful for us to all talk about. And we'll have uh, a couple of different pauses for questions as we go through today. So please don't be shy. Uh, let us know any questions you have as we go, if there's anything you want us to clarify or spend a little more time on, uh, or any specific questions you have on any of the digital marketing channels that we're covering. That's exactly what we're here for today, running this live, so we can have that interaction with you as well. So you can recognize Zoe by obviously being called Zoe, but in case we have more than one, she's also got a little blue spanner next to her name, which shows that she's the moderator for today. So please do say hello to her in the chat if you haven't already. Let us know where you're joining us from today, um, locally, but also what kind of business you run, just so we can get to know who we've got with us here today. And before we start, I just wanted to call out a few things to help you out uh, as we settle in. So if you're having any trouble viewing the webinar at all today, please do try refreshing and it often helps to sync things back up again. And that's true throughout the session today. If anything goes a little bit out of sync, if it's uh, if it's on my end, we'll sort it as soon as possible. But if it's on your side, refreshing can often sort that out. If you would like to join the chat today, you'll just need a YouTube account. So if you've already got a Google account, very, very quick to set up and you can set that up or log into an existing account 
like using the box on the right of the screen, or if you're on mobile, it's just underneath uh, where you're seeing me right now. Or if you're already seeing the chat, then it's likely that you're already signed in. And just to let you know, as we've mentioned, we are running this as part of a broader offering of courses, both in partnership with Elio Fingal, but also um, we run general Google Digital Garage sessions regularly too. So you can find the links of both of those in the description um, below and also in the, the chat where Zoe will share that and probably towards the end as well, we'll mention that again. So hopefully you can join us for some of those future sessions. Uh, we'd love to hear about your experience with this and future sessions too on social media. Uh, and let others know about them if you think you could find them useful. So use the hashtag digital garage and also hashtag making it happen. We'd love to see how you're maybe putting into practice some of the techniques and tips we're talking about today. And one more thing I'd like to just talk about quickly before we jump into today's training. Um, please feel free to check out the new Google Small Business website. So this is a one stop shop for products, tools, training, resources to help move your business forward. So there's an uh, online success guide that will help you to show up on Google, create or improve a website, reach customers, build loyalty, and lots more. Uh, Zoe will share a link in the chat, and you can also find that link in the description box too. We'll also have a feedback form today, as well as a second feedback form I think will be sent out via email. If you complete the feedback form, that will also provide a link for you to download today's content. And if you want to rewatch the video, not just look at the, um, at the slides, then you can also rewatch today's training on the Leo Fingal YouTube channel anytime. So just bookmark this page and you'll be able to come back to it later. So that's all the housekeeping. Let's get on with today's actual digital marketing training. So we've got three main things to look at. We're going to quickly look at understanding digital marketing and just get an idea of the landscape and what the online world means for business. Then we'll be spending most of our time looking at some of the main channels. And then finally looking at how to put that together into a bit of a plan, a strategy that you can use uh, to build for your business and hopefully move it forward. So before we actually start looking at the channels, let's have a think about what digital marketing can do for you and your business. And you might have an idea of this already. So please do share in the chats, what do you get from being online? Why do you bother to be online as part of your business? Why do you put time and effort and potentially even money into being online? And if you're not really online that much at the moment, and that's why you're here, what opportunities do you think you could get from being online as well? So do let Zoe know in the chat what opportunities you get out of having that online presence. So some of the reasons that we think it's a good idea to be online. Firstly, a lot of people are, are buying online. So if you're selling products, it's useful to know 65% of people in Ireland last year bought online. I'm sure that's only increasing as, as people have been spending more time at home and also that ongoing move towards e-commerce as well, people wanting that convenience factor too. On a bigger scale internationally, there's 3.8 billion smartphones in use today and mobile traffic accounts for over 50% of global web traffic. So people are really using the internet wherever they are, um, whether they're out and about and looking for a business to go into, like a shop, for example, or a cafe, or if they're sat at home on the sofa watching TV and scrolling through their, their tablets, or if they're sat at work on a desktop computer, they've really got access to lots of different ways to look into products, services, and businesses like yours. So you can use digital to expand your customer base, so either reach more people locally, but also reach people all over the world and help them to find you online when they're searching, for example, when they're looking on social media and various other channels that we'll look at shortly. So people go to search engines to look for businesses, to ask questions, to figure out which products to buy. They also go to things like social media to ask for recommendations. The example we're seeing on the screen here is a, a tool called Google Trends. So this is available at no charge. It helps you to compare the number of Google searches for products, services, or general topic areas around your business. So the example here is people searching for cut your own hair. <laughs> and I'm sure you can imagine what, what these spikes are, are related to at the moment. But if you're, say, a hairdresser, that might be something you're very interested in. Or maybe you want to look at when people start searching for your products, maybe seasonally, if you have a very seasonal type of business. So do have a look at Google Trends. So we'll share the link in the chat, or you can just type in Google Trends. Uh, do make sure to change it to the country you're looking at, so most likely Ireland, but you could also use it to compare searches in other countries too. You can also use digital to learn a bit more about your customers. 
So the example we've got here is from Google Analytics, but you can also look at, say, social media analytics and insights reports too. And, and this one's just showing the breakdown of gender and age groups for customers going to this particular business's website. So that can help us learn a bit more about the demographics of the people who visit our site, understand maybe who those people are and what they're looking at on the site as well. Uh, and as Ashim mentioned, we do have a, an analytics session coming up in this series if you want to learn more about how to use those two. And of course, you can use digital to communicate and support your customers better. So being online means that people can communicate with businesses easily and quickly, even if you don't intend your say, social media platforms to be used for customer service, it's likely you are going to get some questions some comments, things like reviews as well. So people are already spending a lot of their time on things like Twitter and Facebook. Uh, maybe you even have a business presence on something like WhatsApp or Messenger. So these communications can be public. Sometimes they're behind the scenes in terms of private messaging. And all of them can help you to share information with your customers, uh, respond publicly and privately to things like reviews or questions, and just let people know what's going on with your business so they're always up to date. So we're going to be looking at the benefits of digital marketing for um, a business through these different channels. So we've talked about more general benefits. We're going to explore six different channels um, to think about how we can use these for your different businesses. You might be using a lot of these already. Some of you might not be using any of them. Likely you've, you've heard of a few of them as well. So do let us know as we go through if there's any channels that you maybe have been um, spending a lot of time on recently. If you've got any great tips as well, it's always good to get uh, a bit of insight into how you're using these channels as well. So we are going to go through all of these more in depth. Bear with me for a moment. Just going to go through them all very top level first, and then we'll dive a bit more into each one. So firstly, we've got SEO, search engine optimization. This is optimizing your website so it shows up more or at least starts to show up on search engine results. And then the longer your business is around, the more you might be looking at optimizing that presence and showing up for even more types of words and phrases. Then we've got related search engine marketing. So this is paying for advertising to show up in search engines. We've got social media marketing. This is both organic, so free, and also paid for ads that you get on those social networks that you can use to get in front of more people. Great for building community and relationships. We've got display marketing, which is another form of advertising as well. And this is showing up in lots of different image and video formats on different types of websites across the internet. We've got email marketing, which I'm sure you've, you've had many emails from businesses today. We all get them in our inboxes all the time. And this is thinking about how you can use these to communicate with your own customers and build that loyalty and sense of uh, connection too. And then we've got content marketing, which, which really you could spend a whole, whole session just talking about. There's lots of different types of content, but we're just going to look at how you can use things like blog posts and videos, guides, eBooks, infographics, quizzes, any type of content to attract attention, to show that you know what you're talking about and to build that loyalty again with your customers. So we will have a break for questions at the end of the section. So even though we're going through quite a lot in this, this quite long section, do feel free to keep those questions coming and we'll dive into them when we get the chance. And I'm sure Zoe will be able to answer some in the chat, although she does have some limited characters there. So we're gonna start off looking at the two different search channels. Firstly, um, search marketing, uh, sorry, the other way around actually. First, we're gonna look at organic search and then search marketing, but first just get an idea of how those sort of play together as well. So I'm sure you've all seen the search engine results page before, or SERP or SCRP, you might hear it, hear it called for short. Um, and this contains three main areas. So we've got outlined in yellow what we call the keyword or the search term or the search query. Uh, all mean kind of the same thing. And that's the word or phrase that somebody types in. So in this case, best compact camera for travel. So that's what we as the searcher have typed in to be able to see this page in the first place. And then we've got two types of results showing up. And this is just one example of a search engine results page. In this case, because it's product related, we do have some shopping ads showing up. So they're the image boxes at the top. And then we also have one paid text ad. Sometimes you see just the paid text ads. You might see two or three of those. Sometimes you won't see any ads at all. It really does depend on the search and what Google thinks is, is most relevant to the person seeing that page. And then we've got the organic or free search listing. So this is where you're showing up 
on search but without paying to be there so you're not paying to run those ads you're appearing because Google thinks that you're relevant to that particular search and you can see that well maybe not because it's quite small writing um, but all of these are very related to compact cameras travel related or top 10 lists or something to do with best so they're all very very relevant as are the the ads and the images we see here to that particular search so that's how they all sort of fit on the page obviously you might see different things there as well like Google Maps you might see videos popping up it's all going to depend on the type of page that you have here. So looking at SEO and how do we start appearing in those organic results listings, the first thing I would recommend is signing up to a tool called Google Search Console. This is available at no charge. It's a great tool and it helps you to see how you're showing up on Google Search right now. If you're a newer website, that might be not at all, <laughs> in which case you can actually submit a sitemap and help Google to understand what your pages are. You can do that if you're an existing site too, but especially if you're a newer site, that can be really helpful. And then you can start to see if there's any issues or errors that Google is having looking at your site and figuring out what your pages are and also monitor how you're showing up. So it's much more effective and much more realistic than Googling yourself or trying to Google certain keywords because you're not going to show up in the same way for yourself as you might do for all of your customers. So Search Console will let you see how you're showing up, what kind of keywords you're showing up for and when, and look at those patterns over time. So if you're planning on doing any work at all on SEO, you definitely want to set that up so you can see if your work is paying off, what's working, what's not, and how your performance is changing over time. You then want to think about how you can start to create really valuable content that your users are going to find useful. So whether that's things like product pages that are telling people exactly what it is you're selling, whether that's blog posts that are more informational, whether it's FAQ pages, it really will depend on your type of business. Think about for each page what the general topic area is. Think about writing a page title that really explains both to search engines and to your real human customers what that page is about. You've also got a field called meta description or sometimes called a snippet, which allows you to write a couple of short sentences uh, about what that page is, is, is talking about, about the topic area. And that helps again, search engines, but also users when they see you in search results to understand a little bit more about your page. And think about writing sort of fresh and new content as well. If, if you're in an industry that does change quite a lot, uh, especially at the moment, there's always things changing in, in lots of different industries. Think about writing fresh content that's going to be really helpful for your users, maybe seasonal content, for example, or content around new products or services that you're bringing out. So some tips for success, think about running keyword research. So you can use tools like the Google Keyword Planner. We've already mentioned Google Trends as well, which can be useful here. And there's lots of other keyword research tools. So you can think about what words or phrases people are actually typing in when you might be a useful business to show up. So you can brainstorm a bit, get into the mindset of your customer, think about how they might search, which might be different from how you search too. Think about the content that then might relate to those types of words and phrases. So what are they asking questions? Are they typing in words about specific products? Are they asking about how their, your yoga classes can help with their sore backs? You know, they might be asking lots of different questions and typing lots of different phrases that you can maybe write content about. So it's all about getting that understanding of your potential customer and what they need to read or what they want to see from your website. And then you can think about making sure your existing pages as well as any new pages are search friendly. So that's where those titles and meta descriptions come in. They're both used by actual people, but also by the search engines. You can also use things like heading tags to try and figure out exactly um, how your content should be structured and make that easier, both for, for the humans and for the search engines to understand the flow of that content too. You can also think about if you are a very local business, you have a shop, for example, a cafe, a restaurant, something that people come into, or if you're a business that goes out to other people like a plumber, electrician, maybe you're a hairdresser who goes to people's houses, you can think about using some more local marketing techniques too. So if you're uh, a local business that has a shop, for example, you might want to set up the Google My Business listing. That's again, a tool that's available at no charge. You can go to it on desktop by typing Google My Business, or you can search um, for the app as well and manage it that way. So you've always got it on your phone or tablet on the go. Uh, and that can help you to show up locally on things like Google Maps, but also in search results too. Bing, Yale, TripAdvisor are all great examples of other online directories, which allow you to do something quite similar. 
and, and you might also find some that are more industry specific for you or even local so maybe your local newspaper has um, listing sites or your local um, sort of business organization allows local businesses to list there so look at all those opportunities to get those listings uh, in lots of different places and keep them up to date too so in any listing, but obviously we're going to talk specifically about Google My Business here, you want to make sure that people know your business listing is up to date and that you're being active too. So make sure your opening hours are up to date, add up to date photos. If you've had listings already, this is a good, good point to maybe go and check over them. Make sure that you've got up to date photos and videos. Uh, you get rid of any that are maybe a bit older and don't reflect your business anymore. Make sure your contact details and website link are up to date as well. Uh, and make sure you're responding to any reviews, both good and bad, to make sure that people can see that you're an active and responsive business too. So we're going to look at the difference between that SEO and now um, search engine marketing, which is the paid for ads side of search. So SEO, as we've mentioned, um, at no charge, you're not paying a search engine to appear, you're just showing up because that search engine thinks that you're relevant to the, the thing the person was searching for, that search query or search term. You optimize around those keywords and topic areas that you think would be useful to your customers by creating content. And of course, it then can take time. I mean, firstly, you have to have a website and add content to it. That can take time in itself. But also, you need search engines to start trusting your content and, and really understanding it before it will start showing up. And you might also find that it's very heavily competitive as well in some areas of your business, maybe not so much in others. Uh, and you'll understand that probably better yourself in terms of what's most competitive in your industry. So search engine marketing, there's some similarities. So we're still talking about keywords here, but in this case, we're, we're telling Google what our keywords are and actually bidding to appear in that ad section of the search results page. So we pay when somebody then clicks on our ad. So a different process, but we're still thinking about how someone is searching what keyword they might be using. You can get onto the first page almost straight away. Um, there might be a little bit of time to get your ad approved, especially if it's your first ad, you haven't run one before, but that's not usually too long. And certainly you can get on that first page a lot faster usually than you can with SEO. So think about how you can balance these two. Some businesses um, will run ads all the time and they build that in as part of their marketing budget. Others might use them just as part of key seasonal pushes so maybe there's a certain time of year that's really important for you and you're willing to put a bit of extra budget in then um, maybe it's when you launch new products or services and you want to give it a bit of a push and others of course don't run ads at all because it's just not in their budget uh, or not in their priority area as we'll look at when we talk about um, building all of these channels into a strategy so think about how you can balance these two and where it might be useful to, to pay more attention to one than the other so with search engine marketing, uh, the first thing to do with Google is to create a campaign in Google Ads. So you can log in using an existing Google account um, and you're selecting the search campaign type. There are a few different campaign types, as you'll see. This one would be a search campaign. You then get to choose a goal which will help Google to help you. <laughs> so if you say that your goal is conversions, for example, it will nudge you towards things like setting up conversion tracking so you can see which ads are actually working. You then need to pick your keywords, so it provides the keyword planner to help with that. Make sure you're aligning those with your business goals, so focusing on the product or service areas that are most important to you right now. You can always go in and then add more campaigns later and build that out to, to a much bigger account if you want to. And you can think about things like match types and negative keywords. Slightly more advanced concept here, so I'm not gonna go into this too much, um, but basically different ways of telling Google exactly when you do and don't want to show up in search results. Then you need to think about writing your ad and the thing that people are actually going to read and potentially click on. So you want to think about what are the benefits to your user or your potential customer. The same as any copywriting, really. You want something that's going to appeal to them, that will work across different devices, that will work for your specific audience. Focus on your headlines that you have in the ad because they're often the first thing that people read. They're the, the, the top, very top part of the ad. So if people are skimming, that's what they're going to be drawn to. And think about adding any ad extensions. So if you've searched before yourself recently, I'm sure you have, or we'll keep an eye out for this next time you search. On some ads, you might see they've got a lot of extra things going on, things like location extensions. Maybe they have some extra links underneath their ad. They're all different types of extensions that you can implement um, at no charge. You just pay when somebody clicks on them, the same as the rest of the ad. So just adding them to your account 
doesn't cost you anything apart from a bit of time to do it in the first place. And then you just pay when somebody clicks. Uh, but it allows your ad to take up a bit of extra space on the page uh, and potentially show some extra benefits of your product or service that your main ad just can't fit in with the limited space. It's really important for both SEO and SEM to really focus on those keywords and think about what your customers might be searching for. Add those extensions, as I mentioned, and also do think about connecting your analytics account. It's very easy to do. Obviously, they're both Google platforms. They integrate really nicely, and that allows you to double check what's working best and learn from the things that are working well and apply that to maybe the campaigns that, that need a bit of a boost too. So you can really see what's working for you, what's driving people to your site, and if they're eventually converting, if you have things like an online shop, for example, or a form that people can fill in, you can tie that all into your Google Analytics tracking too. So next we're going to look at display marketing. This is another form of advertising. You've probably heard of or seen these, I guess, even if you haven't heard of the phrase display marketing. It's one of those you say and people say, no, I haven't heard of it. And then when you see it, you think, oh yeah, I see those ads everywhere. <laughs> so they're ads that can appear across the internet, different types of websites. It could be a blog, could be a forum, could be an online newspaper or magazine. I passed it there. And they look a little bit like this. Uh, this is just one example. There's lots of different types. We've got two outlines, uh, three actually outlines in yellow here, one at the top, two at the side, all showing those different shapes and sizes. These are all image ads, but you also get different sizes and shapes of image ads, as well as video ads uh, and text ads that look a bit more like those search ads we've talked about too. So obviously with the images, you get a bit more of that branding impact than you do maybe with the, um, the search ads. These can appear on lots of different types of websites. So you've got a great way of getting in front of different groups of people. However, you're not now showing your ad to people who have searched for something. You're now showing your ad to people based on maybe the content they're looking at, maybe remarketing, so people who've been to your site before and you want to get back in front of. Or it could be people just based on things like their demographics and interests too. So maybe you're showing this uh, emoji ad to people who you know are interested in, uh, well, emoji is maybe a bit niche, but maybe interested in the internet. Um, or maybe you're showing the, the banking ad at the top to people who are interested in finance or people in a specific age group. So there's lots of different ways to target these to different groups of people. So you actually get started in very much the same way as with search ads. You sign into Google Ads, but this time you'd be selecting a display campaign type instead of search, and you still select a goal. So, so far, very much the same. However, this time, instead of using keywords to target, we're actually using the built-in display planner tool to think about these different groups of audiences and people. So maybe you're um, a shoe seller and you want to focus on women in a certain age group who are interested in fashion. And you can layer up lots of different types of targeting. You can target by the type of website. So it could be that you're a restaurant and you want to target people who are on food websites, for example. So you can really layer these up on top of things like location targeting as well until you get the audience that you're looking for. And then you still have to create an ad, but this time you've got some image and video options as well as your text ad options too. So you're still putting text in the same way as we did with the search ads, but we also need to then upload some images um, and, and make them look very on brand and, and catchy and, and appealing to our audience too. So we're trying to capture people's attention, but we've just got different a different way, a different format of doing it this time. So really important for display to really understand that customer base. So have a think before you even start planning this campaign. Who are your customers that you're trying to get in front of with this specific campaign? You can then think about remarketing as well. So if you are um, a website maybe that has an online shop, your e-commerce site, maybe you want to target people who've been to your site, added something to your basket, and then they have left without finishing that purchase. So you can set up remarketing so that you target people who have got to a certain stage of your site or maybe they've just spent a bit of time on your site and almost remind them, give them a bit of a nudge to come back. Really important for display as well to really test and optimize. So test different types of ad formats and different images, see which ones appeal and get the most interest and engagement. Uh, and that can help you to use the data to really think about which messages are working best and which ones aren't. So the same as for search ads, you can test different messages there. This time you've got the option to test different images, different videos, but also different text that appears with your ad too. 
So this is probably the one that most of you are already the most familiar with, social media marketing. Uh, let us know in the chat which social platforms you tend to use the most. I'd love to see. You usually get a bit of a mixture when we ask that question. So social media marketing is really around networking and relationships and communication. You know, social, so it should be that two-sided. It's not just you sort of using it as a sales channel, but it's really about having those conversations and nurturing relationships with customers and turning them into advocates of your business. So social can help you in lots of ways. It can help you to generate more sales. Um, up to 62% of the Irish population are active monthly social network users. That's a really high proportion. And again, I'm sure that's only going up, tends to go up every single year when we get these stats. So it's a really good place to connect with new customers, but also existing customers. Um, maybe they've been into your shop, maybe they've bought from your website, maybe they've interacted with you in some way before. It gives them a good place to sort of follow you and see what you're doing. So you've got the opportunity to reach new audiences. Um, if you're B2B, that could be around new business opportunities as well as end customers. Think about targeting specific demographics with ads and also building that relationship over time. Can also add value to your brand. So you can use it for things like customer service to raise those customer service levels. Start conversations through things like messaging behind the scenes if people have questions. Show behind the scenes and maybe more of a personal side to your business and really build your own community as well by getting that engagement from others. And it can help to improve your general marketing. So you can get noticed on search. You might see things like tweets, for example, showing up in search results. It can also help you to push people towards your site through linking from your posts and vice versa, going from your site to, say, Facebook, for example. It can help you to get those insights we talked about earlier. So from things like Facebook or Instagram insights, and it can also help you to keep an eye on competitors, but also your local business community and stay in touch with them too, to build a maybe a different type of relationship with other local businesses. So like with search, we've got organic and paid. So we've got organic is that when you just set up for free, um, you are just posting on that platform and you're just going to reach the people who are already following um, your page or your account or your profile, whatever it's called on that platform. And then maybe if they like or share or comment on it, their friends and connections might see your posts as well. Whereas for paid social media, this is where you're paying for ads. So obviously we're talking about quite a few different platforms here, but generally you pay for actions that could be just showing your ads to people. It could be for clicks, so similar to the search ads, or it could be um, for things like video views, for example, too. And this means you can reach anyone. They don't already have to be following you. It's much more like display advertising where you can target specific demographics. So how to get started? Like with any type of marketing, it's all about identifying your target audience first. So who are you trying to speak to? And that might look different on LinkedIn than it does on Twitter or TikTok. You might have different groups of customers that engage with you differently in different places. You can also then think about which channels make the most sense for you and your business. So Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube, uh, Snapchat, TikTok. It really depends on who that age group is you're trying to reach, what kind of posts you want to make. Maybe you're going to be more video focused, for example. So YouTube would be a good choice, maybe very um, image heavy. So Pinterest could be great. Maybe it's very sort of short, short and conversational messages, something like Twitter. Or you might have a bit of a mixture, again, to reach different groups of people. And then you need to think about posting engaging content regularly. And it really is all about the consistency. So think about the different types of content that your own customers are going to find useful. It can be very tempting to see what different businesses are doing well. And of course, that's always useful. But you really want to focus on your own customers. So you can use the data that you're getting from your previous posts to really see what's working for your own audience and refine that over time. And think about sharing different types of content, so photos, videos, uh, stories, and live video as well, really popular at the moment. Uh, any blog articles, infographics, and of course, linking through to your website to occasionally around your actual products and services. So it's mixing in that useful content as well as telling people about your business too. Tips for success, make sure you're setting yourself a goal or some goals, both short term and long term. Don't just focus on that top line follower number. You really want to think about what you're trying to get out of social uh, and what that key metric is for you. So maybe it's sales, maybe it's comments and engagement, 
maybe it's actually different from one platform to the next. So make sure you're setting yourself some goals. Really think about that audience again. And as I said before, consistency is key with social media. So really thinking about how you're going to get those, those posts out there day after day, week after week, and set yourself sort of a regular posting schedule. It doesn't have to be a specific date and time that you go with, but certainly have in mind how many day, times uh, a week or a day you want to post. And that's really going to depend on your resource. So email marketing, I think this is uh, secretly my, my favorite, not that I have favorite digital marketing channels, but I definitely think it's an underrated one. And it can be really great for building customer loyalty. You're speaking to your existing customers or people who've already expressed an interest. So they're people who have already opted in to hear from you. They've got that initial engagement already going. They're already interested in what you have to say. So it can be a really great one for building those relationships. So unlike one-to-one -one emails that you might send on a daily basis, you know, to and from customers, customer service emails, we're really talking about email marketing here. So that's sending one or similar messages to many people. So groups of people, hundreds, maybe even thousands of people. It's permission-based. So that means your readers need to opt in and you need to explain to them exactly <laughs> what it is they're signing up for. You can't just sign people up because they've interacted with you once. They need to know that they're opting in to receiving those emails. And it gives you that opportunity to communicate on a large scale, but still feeling quite personal with people who actually were interested enough in what you do to share that email address, to say, yes, you can send something to my inbox on a regular basis. So it's that really engaged potential customer audience and probably including people who've already bought from you before as well. So your first step with email is really to select your email marketing platform. There are platforms out there that are no charge or have at least um, premium slash entry level levels almost so you can choose which tier is best suited for you so you can look at the features that are available in each and make that decision for yourself and there's also those much more technical maybe more premium email platforms so if you're not sure maybe look at a few they often have trials as well you can try it out either at no charge or a very reduced charge for a certain amount of time to see if it's the right fit for you you then need to start building that list so you have someone to email so think about where you have existing reach, maybe it's social media. Often it's putting a sign up box somewhere on your website or in a couple of different places on your website as well, or letting existing customers know if you have say a physical presence that people might come into in future, you can let people know in store that you have that email available to. So let your existing customers know where they can sign up and start collecting th that data so you can be ready to send out that first email. You can also think about segmenting. So that just means grouping people. That could be by location. So maybe you have two different shops or maybe you have two different types of audience. So a really common one is for fashion, menswear versus womenswear. Ask people which one they want to hear about. Um, it could be that you have um, business to business, like a wholesale side of your business, as well as selling directly to customers. Those two groups might want to hear different things from you. So again, you can ask them when they sign up which, which type of information they're most interested in. Then you can start creating relevant, useful content for either everybody at once uh, or to those different groups and segments that you've created. The idea here is to really treat your readers like VIPs, make them feel like there's a reason to stay subscribed. So that could be offers, but it could also be things like exclusive content, something they don't hear elsewhere, being the first to hear about something new, so a new range or a new service, um, something that they might not get from just following you on social media. And that's going to give them that incentive to keep opening the emails and also to stay subscribed because, yes, you want them to sign up in the first place, but you also want them to keep opening the emails time after time. So keep it useful, keep it interesting, make them feel like they're really getting an insider's look at something and they're part of your sort of VIP community. So tips here we've mostly covered already, but segment and group the list. Think about if you do have those very distinct user groups, how you can segment them. Definitely test it first. So keep it simple in terms of layouts. I usually send it to myself, but also maybe a friend with an iPhone, um, maybe someone with a, a Hotmail account or an Outlook account. So I can test it on Gmail and they can test it there. And they can all give me feedback um, in terms of how it's showing up on their own device before you send it out to your wider list. 
So even if it's just sending it to yourself or a colleague, it's always useful to do that mini test before you send it out and click that go button. And do look at the stats that you get within your email marketing platform. So the open and click rates, for example, you can also often run tests. So A-B testing, sending at different times of day, for example, or trying out a couple of different subject lines to see which one has a bigger impact. So there's a lot you can do uh, as you start sending more emails to, to really optimize and see what's working for people. And then we've got content marketing. So as I said before, content really, you could spend a whole day just on content. Um, it's definitely a big topic, but we're going to hopefully give you some tips for getting started and thinking about what kind of content might work for you. And the essence of content in terms of marketing is brands delivering consistent, ongoing, valuable information and building that sense of trust and loyalty and understanding of our industry area. So people will see us as kind of the go-to source for information uh, or for something fun or entertaining, even if it's not directly related to our products or sales in that moment. So it's not always about directly selling the product, it's more about selling the idea of your brand and creating that connection with your customers. So the, the two most people think of straight away are things like videos and blogs, but there's also loads of different types of content like case studies and testimonials, guides, ebooks, quizzes, lots of fun types of content out there at the moment. And of course, social media would almost fit into this as well. That is the type of content that you're putting out there. So lots of different formats. So you really have to think about what fits with your industry, what makes sense for the kind of content you want to get out there, the kind of topic areas. Some might be better suited naturally to a video, others to written formats, some for short forms, some for longer, and also to your resources. So think about what time you have, equipment. So video, for example, might take a bit more time than writing a blog post if that's something you haven't done before. Or maybe you prefer creating a video, you, you hate sit down and writing and you, there's no one on your team who would do that. So you can really think about your own skill set here as well and think about what content makes the most sense. So think about your customers. I think we've said this for almost every channel, but definitely think about who those people are that you're trying to get in front of. Create sort of a customer persona or profile, just sort of profiling your main group of customers or maybe your different groups if you do have a few different areas of customers you want to sort of tap into. Think about their customer journey. So when they first start looking for your product or service, what kind of information or content might they, they be interested in? How about when it's a little bit further down the line? And maybe even content for people who've already bought from you. So sort of loyal customers who might be coming back. You can then think about how you can create content for each of those stages. So if you can map out that customer journey, I quite like to do it with post-it notes. There's lots of online tools that can help you to do that as well. Uh, think about the customer journey stages and what kind of content might make sense at each of those stages. And although you don't want content to feel overly salesy, you certainly want to nudge people towards certain calls to action. So think about including call to action. You know, maybe you've written a blog post about um, 10 different ways to wear scarves and you can link people through to your scarves section of your website. So it's not overly salesy. It's not like a catalog post but it is nudging people in that right direction. So you do want to think about how you can use content to be useful for the customer or interesting for the customer, but also to facilitate that, that sales process since that is your, your end goal. Think about using storytelling to engage with your audience. Uh, you really need to think about distribution, that's important. So if you write an amazing blog post, that's all well and good, but you need a way to get it in front of people. So could that be through things like your email marketing or social media? Utilize those other channels that you have to get your content out there. You can often reformat things. So maybe you've posted a five minute video on YouTube, but you can take a 30 second snippet to post to Instagram to, to sort of move people across to watch the full video. So think about those different ways of distributing your content to maximize the reach and make the most of that time and effort that you've put into creating that content. And you also, of course, want to think about measuring performance and optimizing too. So think about how you can measure the different types of content with videos that might be looking at the amount of the video, the, the minutes people have viewed. With blog posts, it might be the amount of time people are spending on the page. It's going to be different for different formats of content, but think about what's most important for you to measure. And then you can start comparing over time which contents may be working better than others. So I'm just going to check in, see if we've had any questions so far. 
Okay, we've had a lot of your opportunities of being online from the beginning, a lot of you saying sales, income, revenue, reaching larger audience, connecting, which is great. And I can't see any questions. I think Zoe's been answering a lot of them in the chat, which is brilliant, but do feel free if you've got any uh, to keep sharing as well. So we're now going to look at how you can build this into a bit of a strategy. It's all well and good knowing which channels you want to use, but you need to think about it strategically and think about how you can dedicate time and sort of prioritize the channels that make most sense for your goals. So we'll see this again at the end, but just to, to run through, we're going to go from goals all the way through to measuring the outcome of, of what we've been putting out there. So we're going to walk through each of these six steps one at a time. So our first one is goals and objectives. So your business goal would be a bit more of a, an overarching goal across your entire business, not just your online presence, but anything else you might be doing. And then your objective should be a bit more specific to your online activity. So we've got our example of Max here, who is a hairdresser, um, and his business goals are to get more customers through the door. So in his physical hairdressing salon uh, and to make more people in, in the area know that his business exists, so to get that visibility. So he could do that through things like leafleting, for example, that would be a great way to achieve that goal, but it's not part of our digital marketing plan. So that business goal might be a bit broader. And then to turn some of those into online objectives, that could be around increasing traffic to a website, increasing your online sales, as well as maybe your in-store sales, which would be your, your offline objective increasing social media page likes or follows or engagements or increasing general online reach and awareness so you can try and match some of these up to your think for each business goal how can my online presence help me to achieve that so if i want to sell more products obviously i can increase website sales that that's going to be my my goal but you might also then have other offline strands that sort of support that goal as well if you want to get more returning customers you might want to um, get more reach through your email marketing list or get more followers on Facebook from people who've already bought from you. Uh, but you might also want to get more returning customers just making a, a booking on the phone through your ha um, hairdressing too. So you've got lots of different ways you can achieve those goals. So objectives are just getting a bit more specific about how your online presence is going to help. Then you want to consider your budget and resource. You can almost do this right at the beginning uh, if that's easier. So for Max, he doesn't have a website yet and isn't interested in investing in that right now. It's just not in the budget. So he's gonna have to focus on some other areas. You might be the same and think, actually, we've got a lot of time, but not so much budget. Others might have more money than time. <laughs> so you can think about the balance. You can also think about skills as part of your resource. Maybe there's something you'd really like to do, but you need more training on it. Um, maybe it's equipment that you need. So you really want to start a podcast or um, make YouTube videos, but it's the equipment that you need to, to get sorted. So think about what's stopping you at the moment and also what's possible and realistic. You might have a brilliant idea that just isn't achievable right now. So it can be part of your longer term strategy, but maybe it's not going to be in your short term strategy for the next three months or so. And we've talked so much about audience, so it's really important to try and identify who that audience is or who those different audiences are if you do have more than one. You can write something like this, like a mini customer persona. You can also think about you know, drawing it out. It's a really good team activity, actually. If you have a business partner or uh, employees or colleagues, you can all get together and maybe socially distancing, but uh, all get together virtually and, and put together who you think the audience is and then compare and see if you're all on the same page or not. So you can write a sort of mini profile like Max has done here about who his core customer is that he's trying to get in front of. Then you can use all of that. So your goals, your budget and resources and who your customers are to really decide which channels are the right ones for you. So there's not specific channels that we can really recommend. A lot of people say, well, which channel should I focus on first? It is very, very dependent on what you're trying to get out of it. So we've got some examples here, but they're certainly not exclusive to these online objectives. Uh, for example, if we wanted to increase website sales, maybe we would look at SEO for people who are searching for those products. But we might also look at email marketing for people who um, have already bought from us before, already signed up and might want to repurchase something. If we want to increase customer loyalty, we could look at things like social media where we have those ongoing relationships 
And then of course, things like your budget will come into play here as well. Obviously, if you decide you don't have any budget, then you're gonna be crossing off any of these advertising options and thinking about the areas that um, are lower cost or maybe take a bit more time than they do money. You can also look at if you're already running marketing, obviously we're kind of taking this from the perspective if you might not be using any of these channels, but a lot of you will already be using some of these channels. So what's been working for you so far? What do you want to carry on with? And what maybe needs a bit of a refresh or maybe just isn't quite working for you at the moment? And then planning your activity, this is really um, <laughs> a bit specific to what you choose. So we'll take Max's example just to walk you through. So we know his online objective is to get more people and more visibility in the local area. He doesn't have a website, so he's got a few one-off tasks like listing his business on Google My Business. He's also going to set up a Facebook page, but then he's got some ongoing tasks too. So posting pictures of customer hairstyles, using Facebook ads, which will be his initial setup, but also ongoing check-ins with that as well. So you can plan what we need to do as those one-off to-do list sort of tasks and what do we need to do if um, on an ongoing daily, weekly basis? And that could be you, it could be people you're working with, maybe you're outsourcing some of this. So really starting to plan that day-to-day, -day, weekly activity. And then measuring. So I don't know if anyone's heard of SMART goals. Let us know if you have. It's not just about business. It's also used in lots of things like fitness and health as well, uh, and general business goal setting. So it's an acronym, it stands for specific, measurable, attainable slash achievable, uh, realistic and timely. So it's a way of making those goals a bit more understandable and a bit more measurable. So instead of saying our objective is to increase online sales, we actually want to set a specific number because if I say I want to increase online sales and I go from five sales to six, that probably wasn't the kind of increase I was hoping for. So get a bit more specific. So in this case, we want to increase online sales by 20% within three months. Instead of just saying to increase brand awareness, so lots of different ways you can measure that. We're now saying we can increase brand awareness on Facebook by growing our audience by 40% and specifically with new people. So this gives us a nice way to check in. We, we know for the first goal, we want to check in after three months. The second one, we don't actually have a, a set time for, so we're missing the, the T there. It's just a small goal at the moment. Um, but we, we know we want to reach that 40% sort of mark. And then we're putting it all together into a bit of a plan. So this can look like, <laughs> like this with the different boxes, or you might write it up in a nice document, or you might have it on a post-it note somewhere on a cork board or, or whatever you might have to, to make sure it's accessible to you and anyone else who needs it. And really something that's a working document that you can come back to. Don't just write a strategy and then put it in a drawer or a virtual folder somewhere and leave it. You want to be referring back to it, making changes and, and use it as a adaptable living document strategy you can come back to. So those are our steps. And again, you'll be able to access the content as well as watch the video. So you can maybe refresh on some of these if you want to come back and work through them, pause the video and work through the different sections and, and make sure you've ticked off all those six boxes. That could be a, a good way to work through it. So I can't see any questions. I think Zoe's been busy in the chat. So your next steps for us, I'm actually going to hand back over to Ashin as well. Um, but just quickly want to talk about the um, Google for Small Business website again. So this is that one-stop shop for resources and tools for your business, um, which we've got linked in the description box under the video, but also Zoe can share in the chat and probably has done at the beginning as well. And we also have a number of other webinars that we run, both this series in partnership with Elio Fingal, but also our general upcoming webinar series that you can come to as well. And I'm going to hand back over to Ashin now, if he is there. Yes. Thank you, Emma. And I really hope you can hear me this time, because unfortunately, I was in mid-flow earlier on. And it, it just goes to show, I think um, one of the phrases I have heard so much in the last 12 months is, unmute yourself. So <laughs> it, 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 it was only after... Um, after I concluded that, I realized I got all these messages say, saying to unmute yourself. I, I didn't see it at the time. So my apologies to everyone for that earlier on. Um, 
Thank you all for, for attending this particular event. What I had said at the very start there, and I might just say it now when I was when I was muted, was uh, two things. Number one, um, the, we have a website, localenterprise.e forward slash Fingal, and you had uh, booked your place for this event at that for this particular webinar. So uh, what I would do is to urge you to look at that website. There's a lot of other uh, webinars. There's a lot of networking events as one-to-one -one mentoring support services there are financial supports available also and this landscape is changing very very quickly all the time during the current pandemic there's a lot of new programs new services being rolled out through leo fingal and indeed all of the local enterprise offices so do keep your ear to the ground as to what's going on that might be of help to your business um and the second thing i was going to say to you was um to to if if you would please take two to three minutes to respond to a survey monkey we're going to be sending a survey monkey for everybody registered for this webinar today because we would really like to get your feedback as to you know how, how you found it whether you found it a benefit and areas that we might improve and so on because we're always very keen to hear what your feedback is in relation to the various different webinars and programs that we put together so thank you all for coming along to today's session i want to thank everybody in, in google because this was the first of five in this series uh, we're already making plans for beyond this series of five webinars uh, and there will be a lot more coming down the tracks so thank you all for tuning in and i wish you all a very good day and hopefully we we'll see a lot of you back here next week thank you <laughs>